I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. My truth, your truth, we're all truthing together. Well, Wednesday takes on my truth. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the Higher Things app. Just search your favorite platform for Higher Things Lutheran, and you will get all our content in the palm of your hand. And donate. Higher Things is a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation, the faith of Jesus. And if you think our kids need Jesus, give today. Link in the description. Hi Woke Wednesday allows us to talk to Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, the face that runs the place, a former high school, uh, public high school teacher, and thus woke literate. Erica, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Um, Erica, uh, what is my truth? What do people mean when they speak of my truth? Well, maybe you've heard the phrase um, in, in common speech recently. Uh, maybe you've heard things like, I've been trying to live my truth today, or um, I admire the way you speak your truth. Uh, we disagree. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. Um, have you heard people talk like that here and there? Do you get to hear that? Yeah. Um, so my truth is a pretty widespread popular phrase, which in reality is used to express that person's opinion or experience or their perception. Um, however, my truth has sort of an unarguable, non-negotiable quality to it when you use it. Sort of like you can't contradict me because it's my truth. Or in other words, it's sort of a convenient phrase for avoiding arguments uh, because people just can't contradict your opinion. Because people can contradict your opinion, but not really your truth. Um, so it makes it very hard when your agenda is to justify a controversial personal stance or action because people aren't allowed to, allowed to argue. Um, and so that doesn't really line up with, uh, it's really redefining the term truth. Um, it's using truth subjectively rather than objectively. Um, so truth is defined by dictionary.com as, well, it has a lot of definitions, but I'll give you a few. The true or actual state of a matter, uh, like he tried to find out the truth, uh, conformity with fact or reality, uh, a verified or indisputable fact, the state or character of being true. Um, so that's that's basically what what my truth means. It's it's sort of a, a not maybe not the truth. It's more an opinion or um, uh, your perspective, I would say. So it's admirable quality. It's an admirable quality to state your opinion and stick by it. But when you define, when you twist the definition of truth to imply that. Um, you can't argue with me. You're kind of, you're kind of messing with the English language a little bit there. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, it seems that your move to Scranton, Pennsylvania, has come to an end. Your new job at the Stanley's paper company an, going off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Stanley's keeping an eye on me here. <laughs> all right. So um, that is a different definition of truth than historically has been used. I think it it's probably the 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 adjective my which is right in front of the pronoun my which is yeah. which is more more the, more of a, a thing where where's the origin of this So I think that this idea of subjective truth um your truth my truth his truth or her truth isn't really new um but it became popularized I think as far as I can tell sort of with Oprah Winfrey the great you know, improve your, your, live your best life now, guru. Um, and she gave a, a famous Golden Globe speech about, um, uh, in about 2018, uh, when a potential presidential run was on the table for her. And in that speech, she was sort of talking about the Me Too movement. Uh, and, and she was famously quoted saying, what I know is, uh, for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we have. And if you know much about Orth, uh, Oprah Winfrey's background, she had some pretty traumatic things happen to her, and um, she spoken publicly about it and talked about the fact that, that this has made her um, a strong person and successful in life and so forth. And I certainly wouldn't discount that, you know, from her. 
Um, another uh, sort of famous person around that time is Tana Smith, who um, is a big YouTuber, um, and she had been doing do-it-yourself sort of decor strategy. She has more than 300,000 subscribers, and she even switched up what she was doing on her own personal channel when all this was going on to something more personal about speaking your truth. Um, and she used her platform to talk about a painful breakup, an eating disorder, um, some struggle with alcohol addiction, um, so that she could encourage her viewers to know that they aren't alone in their own struggles so that they might be encouraged to speak their truth also. Um, and she was quoted saying, the reason to speak your truth is to help people and be more connected and create more of a sense of oneness in the community. It's not about being right. And so that's really contradictory, that last sentence there, that it's not about being right because the truth is about what is right. Um, and I certainly don't want to, I want to be really careful here to say in regards to the Me Too mu movement and what, what um, the intentions of are of the Me Too movement, I don't think are entirely bad. I think it's certainly important if something happens to you that you talk about it, that you speak to people about it, that you do and do, it, do indeed speak the truth of, of what happened. But if, um, but what if living out your truth is sort of distorting the facts with your personal bias and that just sort of being okay with you? Um, what if your truth is that the earth is flat or maybe that vaccines are bad or that dinosaurs help build the pyramids? Maybe those things should be called opinions because they can't, maybe be proved. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of the background that, you know, if, if you're saying it's my truth, but it's not actually the truth, it's not entirely helpful. Right. So, um, this is always the, my favorite part of our conversation where I get to put you in the hot seat, Pastor Borghart. So, um, what I would like to know is what is real truth in this world of subjective truth in this world of my truth? Well, I, th I think um, I think the objective truth goes with the truth. I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, the life. Uh, Jesus and John's gospel. Um, it sounds like, as you said earlier, that a lot of this is my story. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is my experience. And we sort of be, just be aware of the fact that an unchallenged, internalized story that never, ever actually is challenged has a has a real chance of being skewed by our sin. Um, what I mean by that is like everybody would agree that the axiom that no one's perfect. And so like uh, uh, to err is human. So like before we get somebody to confess that, you know, they're a sinner and that they're concupiscent and that they're like, everything is slanted by their sin, at least they can acknowledge that they're not perfect. And if they're not perfect, then that means that their story or their truth is sort of internalized and perspective into a place that may not be entirely um, the, what the uh, sort of objective reality of what actually happened in an event. Um, does that make sense? So like, oh, yeah. uh, so like we, 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 we have like a, like, uh, it happens in voters meetings and, and stuff all the time where everybody, or, <laughs> or in, in work where everybody has a positive meaning and they have a positive meaning. They have a positive meaning. And they leave the meeting really, really positive and everybody's moving forward. And then there's one person who's like, that was a terrible meeting. Right. That right. was an absolutely terrible meeting. And, and their, and their perspective of it, their, their, for to use your sort of lingo of it, their truth of the event is sort of internalized, and and that's where it's sort of experiential. Um, the truth, the objective truth, the extra nos outside of us truth, is 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 God, is Christ. Now, um, the way He sees the universe is that He died for the universe. The way he sees the universe is that he's redeemed the universe. Lost and condemned creatures purchased and won us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, innocent suffering, and death. Confirmation material materials available at higherthings.org. Um, but um, so like what we need to do is move from like an internalized view of it to an external view of it. Um, 
and, and, and I think experience is going to maybe help with this. I'd like to see how this lasts in 10 years because the folks that are talking about tr my truth, like what if your truth doesn't really mesh with the external actual things um, of what happened? You know what I mean? Like when, when, we dis when, when, a, when, a, when a parent disciplines a child, the child's truth is that the parents are evil. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like my, my toddler, my, my, when my kids were toddlers, like, why do you hate me? Why does Jesus love me and you hate me? And it's all because I sent them to their room. You know, it's like, so like we have to figure out, I'd, I'd be interesting to see how this is going to go with this because it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. It, you cannot run things with, with um, you're driving 55 in a 35 and the, and, and the officer knocks on the glass and, and says, so uh, do you know how fast you're going? Well, I, I felt like I was going 35. That's my truth. Well, actually, you were going 55. Um, yeah. Well, that's great that you believe that, but you cannot argue with my truth that I was going 35. Felt like 35. And that's just not sustainable in a universe. The only objective truth in this universe is, is Christ. The only I am is God. Um, and, and I think the way to sort of penetrate that in a Christian environment is to talk about the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ being like historic. That's the truth of the universe, that Christ died for sinners. Um, I don't believe that it is sustainable to live in a universe where like I murder you and I'm like, that's not, there's nothing wrong with it because you are a bad person. Sooner or later, that's going to, you know what I mean? I stole from you. And that's okay because you're a bad person. That's my truth. I took. I, I'm Robin Hood. I'm actually not the villain. I'm the the hero. Sooner or later, you run up to get somebody who's like, "No, you were going 55." And here's the ticket. Yeah. So I, I I wonder how long this is sustainable. And can you just answer that for 30 seconds? Whether how you believe because we're short on time. Sure. Well, I can. Yeah, I was just going to kind of sum up what you said. Is it sounds like my truth is sort of has me inwardly focused, and that I'm going to get smacked with the law pretty hard um, with my truth, um, especially in the example of you know you're talking about breaking the law by you know driving too fast and trying to tell the officer my truth is, is that I wasn't breaking the law. Um, so that's not going to work very very well. Um, and I think that you've pointed to, I also think from what you said, there's no comfort in my truth. I'm looking at myself. Um, the only kind of comfort I'm ever going to find is in the gospel and the death of re and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so um, maybe it's just a, maybe it's a focus question. What, what am I looking at? What am I focused on? We're going to go um, along because I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make this one observation. We do this with God too. Um my God doesn't send sinners to hell. Well, you know, look, you could, you could say that, 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 um, my friend, Pastor Borkhart is an Alabama fan. And the only, the only friend of mine that is Pastor Borkhart, I truly believe is an Alabama fan. He's just wrong. I'm not. And, and, Again, when reality meets a perspective or an opinion or a truth, it's kind of a good thing because reality and, and the truth are then tested and the real sort of, the thing which happens in the middle is the absolute, you know what I mean? Here, there was a, there was a hill far away where a man took on our sins and died and he rose again. How do we know that's true? Because he came back to life again. People saw him, they testified to that reality. Um, I think we're gonna have to address, um, I think we're gonna have to address more of this in a future uh, video show because we've run out of time. Erica Jacoby, Dunder Mifflin ED, uh, and um, uh, the Michael Scott of Higher Things. Erica, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Your, the Lord knows your truth. He knows how you feel, the wrongs that you've had, the life that you've had. And his answer is the truth that he sent his son to die for you. Um, trust and believe that truth and 
you'll find a reality that is eternal. I'm Pastor George Barker and the dog. And this has been another Higher Things video short.